All right, you see a guy sleeping on the bench behind me? They just cut the grass right here. And I just went, let's see, where is it? Into this Aldi back here. Um, I'm embarrassed to say this is the first time I went to the store other than the BO store to get just like a couple things like this is the first time I went to the store and like really properly brought gro bought groceries in nearly two weeks since I've been here um, I would say the store looks normal um, it's not like the shelves are empty or anything but um, there were stores I went to in the outskirts of the city last year where they were pretty empty just on a normal day with like, you know, no particular reason. Um, as you can tell, the streets around here are incredibly empty. This is like unheard of <laughs> that like, you know, at, at any time that there would be so few people out. Um, even if I would come out like in the middle of the night, there's, you know, there's usually people around and now like, you know, much, much less going on. Um, gradually seeing a few more people wearing masks. Um, I saw one person wearing a mask a few days ago and now I think I've seen like two today already. Um, we're up to like 32 um, cases now, so it's not incredibly high. Um, the borders are not closed or anything, but um, uh, let's see, like the, the baths are closed, public libraries, um, any large gatherings with like indoor over 100 people and outdoor over 500 people, like major stuff li like that is closed. Um, a lot of restaurants apparently are closing because it's more expensive for them to remain open and pay staff if they're not getting any income. But it's not like all places have been mandated to stay closed. It's not like people have been told to stay inside. Um, everyone is still, I would say, kind of going on about their lives, more or less. Uh, yeah, I would say like more or less like they usually would. Um, the hostel is still accepting guests. There are less guests than there normally would be, even on the weekend, uh, where it would be fuller, and even taking into account that it's the off season and it wouldn't be packed. There are still a lot less people. Um, Yeah, I came by here Saturday afternoon and I was thinking that a lot of the businesses were closed, but then I remembered it was Saturday afternoon. So like this place in here, they're, they're in there working today. People are still going out. It's not like a total shutdown and, and paranoia or anything. Um, but I do get the feeling that like it's being taken much more seriously. Um, just because of, you know, because we're, we're seeing what's going on everywhere else. And um, it started in Hungary pretty late, for one. Um, you know, the, the first case was uh, Tuesday, two weeks ago which was coincidentally the day that I arrived. I see these uh, antique bookshops look like they're still closed, but it could just be that it's too early because they, you know, they might not open until uh, a little bit later in the day. It's, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, it's a uh, quarter to 10 right now, so. Uh, it looks like, I can see one of them, like the gate is half up and there's like a dim light inside, so they're probably about to open. Um, 
Yeah. The one thing that I guess was like pretty obvious where you really see an impact was that yesterday was um, a national holiday and it's like one of the three most important days in Hungarian history and they were putting up the banners on the National Museum here on Saturday but they didn't actually have any celebrations on Sunday because you know that would have been too many people gathered all together so um, they they hung up the banners um, it looks like they might be taking the last of it down right now but there there wasn't really anything special going on this is so funny someone this couple just walked in that bookshop there and there's another antique bookshop down there there's like six of them in a row this guy's been standing there for at least 10 minutes waiting to get in. Yeah, I'll admit that I'm sitting here waiting for the bookstore to open, but I can't believe that there are actually other people who are like, you know, lining up outside at an antique bookshop. I just left the bookstore and I got my map of the red zone. This is the... The Lombardy um, Venetian Kingdom, which just happened to be the the red zone in Italy, um, which I thought it was pretty funny to find that right when this was going on, even though the red zone is now expanded, and I was just like, I have to have that, so I'm so glad they're still open, and it was still there, and I was able to go in and get it real quick. So now I want to go check the Great Market Hall and see if it's open just so that I can get some snacks. I wouldn't be surprised if it's closed. I'm prepared for that, but um, I thought I would at least check since it was still open last week. Uh, chances are it's probably just a matter of time until it closes. So I, if it is open, uh, I should definitely buy a bit more. Okay, so I just got my favorite snack salami. Um, a lot of the places are still closed. Where the first time I came here was really early in the morning and they were just closed because it was too early. But now I'm pretty sure they're closed because of the, the virus. Because there's, um, I don't know, it looks like maybe like at least half of the places are closed um, it's pretty quiet there's you know there's not there's not a crowd um, it's not uh, it's not normally crowded when I'm here anyway because I, I come so early that there's not tourists around it's it's just locals but um, I don't know if this is kind of like a gray area as far as like a gathering of more than a hundred people indoors because it is, you know, it's a great market hall, it's a big space, there could be well over a hundred people in here, but I guess it's like there's, I don't know, they're spread out, uh, I don't know if it's an exception because it's mostly food or you know what exactly the 
the thought process there is, but um, yeah, they're still open. Uh, so you can see behind me, they've still got the the people selling tickets to the hop on, hop off bus. So even though a lot of tourists are canceling their trips, the tourism industry is still open for business, I'd say, as much as possible. Okay, I think that was enough uh, adventure for the next couple days. I am beyond exhausted now. I was really freaking out um, last week because I was trying to decide if I should leave and go back to <clears throat> Germany or France. Um, but they both have over 2,000 cases and I mean not only would I be going toward the danger, I'm also really happy I stayed here because I'm hearing the language every day and even if I only learn like one or two words every couple days, it's still something, you know. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm able to soak up the language like at least the tiniest little bit and still, you know, be moving forward toward something and not just sort of stagnating. Uh, for example, and I went to my gluten-free sandwich shop the other day. Normally I say Olma Pita and the lady repeated Olmash Pita and I was like, all right, there's an S in there that I was leaving out. And, um, oh, it's here. Um, this morning in the hostel, I heard the guy say, uh, Minden yot, uh, Seipen. And I recognized the word Minden and Seipen, but I, I couldn't figure out what it meant. And the guy said it's like all the best. And the yot is like the same ending on Kusan Yunk, which is like Kusan Yunk is like we thank you, and this is I don't know, it's similar. <laughs> um, and there's there's normally no Hungarian guests in this hostel, but lately all of them have been Hungarian, so I'm definitely, like, even if I don't go out, I'm hearing a little bit of something, which is definitely a plus. Um, yeah. And now I'm back at home sweet home. Hazi Hostel.